it's commonly understood that buildings are the single largest consumer of fossil fuels. And I figured if I'm going to build a home, why not do it right and make it as efficient as possible? One thing I'm really trying to achieve is to send message to people who see it to say, you know what, you can live kind of normally and in fact you can live with some luxuries and still achieve zero energy and have very high performance from an energy standpoint. Uh, there are a couple features here that I think are, are worth pointing out. Uh, I'll start with the windows because it's such a bright sunny day. It's, it's nice to kind of point these out. So all of the windows in this home are are triple paned, argon filled, low E, all those buzzwords for really high performance windows with a tremendous U value, with a tremendous uh, level of performance in terms of keeping uh, heat and energy in the home and in the summer rejecting sunlight uh, and, and the heat that the sun can bring in um, in the winter. The way it works is with this low E glaze that's on the exterior of these windows. In the summer when there's a high angle of incidence, the low E glaze sort of rejects that IR energy from the sun, prevents it from penetrating the house as much. Um, but in the winter when the sun is, is lower on the horizon and more directly striking the surface of the glass, it actually does penetrate. So it gives the heat that you want in the winter and rejects it in the summer when you don't want it. So that's the way that a low E glaze uh, works on these kind of high, high performance windows. It's interesting because the lofted ceiling is really a purely aesthetic choice, but it doesn't hurt me in any way. Because as you'll see when I take you up into the attic, which is what's on the other side of that wall and above, is, um, is all tempered space. So whether I throw my ceiling up to those rafters or not, it's all within the envelope, so there's no losses there at all. This contrasts with a traditional home where typically what's insulated is the floor of the attic, not the rafters. So that attic sits there like a huge heat sink or cold sink, if you will, depending upon the season. And so your house is competing with this enormous amount of hot air or cold air. And uh, it, it's kind of crazy. But the other thing I'll say about this is you know, this once again illustrates the idea that, you, that uh, luxury and energy efficiency don't have to compete. That again, with today's technologies and a smart design, you can, you can have a little bit of both. So uh, let me show you the attic because I think this is a really important feature of the, of the home in, in terms of its performance. Okay, so another really important energy feature to point out here is what kind of completes the envelope of the house and that is this insulation, spray foam isonine that has a tremendously high R value or insulation properties. And as you can feel, it feels just like the rest of the house up here in the attic. And the fact is, it is, because this is tempered space just like the rest of the house. Technically speaking, I guess this is a basement in that one side of it is below grade. I think that's technically the definition of a basement. But this is nothing like a basement. The floor that you're standing on, this slab, is insulated with, uh, with foam. So the slab is poured on top of foam, so it feels very comfortable compared to just a typical foundation. And uh, the other thing is all of these walls are, again, those insulated concrete forms that go all the way down to the slab on all sides. So this is very livable space, very bright as you can see, and, and very feels just like the rest of the house, really. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to point out is I mentioned the insulated concrete forms a number of times today, uh, including in the basement. This is what an insulated concrete form looks like. So these things stack like Legos, and they'll build up a floor and then pour the concrete, it'll set. They have some rebar in there, uh, metal to reinforce these things. They pour the concrete and then they leave the form there. And this styrofoam insulation is the insulation of the home. Two and a half inches of styrofoam on the inside and out. Now I'll take you to what I think is the, you know, the kind of sexiest of the features and that is the, the solar system. And outside you can actually see the panels on the southern roof, but all of that DC electricity that's coming off those panels comes down to these two inverters, which then turn it into AC energy that can be thrown out on the grid. The next one I'll point you to is the geothermal system here. Um, all of the heating and cooling for the house is done through this ground source heat pump, um, more generally referred to, I guess, as a, as a geothermal system. But the important thing to, to understand is that this geothermal system is not creating energy. It's just allowing me to heat and cool the house very efficiently. So the, the geothermal system circulates a uh, biodegradable ethanol through these pipes that go out to about a 500-foot well 
on the north side of the house, and it's a closed loop system. So that ethanol is circulating through the ground and allowing, uh, to, allowing us to transfer BTUs, energy, uh, to and from the ground, depending on, upon the season, to heat and cool the home. Um, I will point out this one. I mean, this is now becoming an, an increasingly common plumbing practice, but you'll see that every single faucet in the home has a direct run. There's nothing is connected in serial. So every warm water faucet, which is the important one here, um, goes directly to this source. You're only heating this, this pipe, if you will, um, between here and that faucet. You're not heating it all throughout the house. So your hot water comes on a lot faster and um, you just don't, you don't lose as much energy in that piping. So this is how I monitor the whole system. If you think of the house as a one complete system, I've got all the data going through this little box here provided by uh, Locus Energy. Um, this thing monitors my production of electricity and the consumption. So I can pull up on a web page, as can anyone else if I give them the, the password, and see what the home is doing at any given moment or across time. And uh, so this is really neat. And what you're not seeing here is on the outside of the house is the net meter which is actually running backwards right now. Uh, this is the meter that Central Hudson, the, the local um, electric company, reads. And it's going backwards, so they're showing that I'm not consuming anything, essentially.